Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to give you a presentation on the petroleum system and the prospects of hydrocarbons in the Krishna Godavari Basin, India. 15 people worked together to create this PowerPoint presentation. Here are the names of the team members. Krishna Godavari Basin is a pericrotonic, passive margin basin in India, which is spread across more than 50,000 square kilometers in the Krishna River and Godavari River basins in Andhra Pradesh. The first gas discovery took place in 1983. It is found during the drilling of conventional wells in the tight oil and gas fields. Krishna Godavari inland and offshore basins have good prospects of tight oil and tight gas reserves from the conducted field studies. Here sediment thickness is over 5 km and found several cycles of deposition where ages late carboniferous to Pleistocene. Major geomorphological features are upland, coastal plains, recent flood and delta plains. First offshore gas field is Dhirubhai 6, KGD 6, by Reliance. It is the India's largest deposit of natural gas and the largest such discovery in the world in 2002. There is a figure which is a geographical map of Krishna Godavari Basin. Now let's discuss about geology of the basin. The geology of the Krishna Basin is dominated in the northwest by the Deccan Traps, in the central part by unclassified crystallines, and in the east by the Kadapa group. The Dawa, southwest central, and the Windhing, east central, form a significant part of the outcrops within the unclassified crystalline. Krishna Delta is predominantly formed by Pleistocene to recent material. This is the illustration of the stratigraphy of Krishna Godavari Basin. Next figure is showing the deep water channel levee complex. Now, we are going to discuss about petroleum system of Krishna Godavari Basin. The petroleum system of the area includes source rock, migration path, reservoir rocks, trapping. The known petroleum system of Krishna Godavari Basin are the Vadaparu Ravwa or Godavari Clay System, the Palakolu Pasarlapudi System, the Raghavapuram Tirupati System, the Gajolapadu Kanukolu System, the Kamugudem Mandapeta or Golapalli System. Here, source rocks are organic rich rock bodies, responsible for the generation of hydrocarbons when thermally matured. They may be clay in nature or carbonate deposits. Characteristics of source rocks are, containing at least 0.5% toke, total organic carbon, optimum thermal maturity, large volume of rock body. The Vadaparu Ravwa or Godavari clay system is the youngest tertiary system that includes a large offshore area and a narrow coastal strip of Godavari graben. Primary source rock for Miocene and Pliocene reservoirs is Vadaparu shale. The Palakolu Pasarlapudi system includes the Pasarlapudi formation of the late Paleocene to early Eocene, which is one of the most important producers of the Krishna Godavari basin. Here, the main source rock is Palakolu shale. The Raghavapuram Tirupati system is the dominant system of the west part of the basin. There, main source rock is Raghavapuram shale. The Gajulapadu Kanukolu system is restricted to Gudivada Graban, where source rock for the Kanukolu sandstone reservoir is Gajulapadu shale, which is moderately hard, poorly fissile and compact shale. The Kamugudem Mandapeta or Golapalli system is the oldest petroleum system in the Krishna Godavari basin. Here, proven source rock are thick and widespread Kamugudem coal and shale sequence. Next, let's discuss about reservoir rock. Each reservoir system has a different reservoir rock in the Krishna Godavari basin. The major reservoir rocks from each system are Ravwa sandstone, Pasarlapudi formation, Tirupati formation, Kanukolu formation, and Mandapeta sandstone. Ravwa formation is Miocene in age, reservoir rock is fine to medium grain sands with interbedded clay and it was deposited under a deep water channel and fan complex. The sand is extensively thick at times. Pasarlapudi formation is mainly consist of sandstone and shales with thin limestone bands shales are grey, moderately hard and compact, splintery, fissile with pyrite and mica. Thin bands of argillaceous sandstone are also present. Minor load structures are present here. Thickness is 870 meter. Here, the figure of geologic section depicting sources, reservoirs, and traps in the Palakolu Pasarlapudi system. Tirupati formation. Overlies Raghavapuram shale layer, and dominated by coarse-grained lithology, which is coarse-grained sandstone. Here given seismogeologic section of Bhimadalu Graban showing rotated fault blocks with source and reservoirs. 
Kanukolu formation is sandstone dominated with minor shale. Here sandstone is fine to medium grained, sub-angular to sub-rounded, fairly sorted. Here, given seismogeologic section of Gudivada Graban showing source, reservoirs, and structure. Golapalli and Mandapeta sandstones are the main reservoir sequences where Mandapeta age is Pamo Triassic age and here reservoir sandstone is medium to coarse grained, occasionally pebbly, micaceous, glauconitic. This seismogeologic section of Mandapeta Graban depicting structural entrapment of gas. Now, let's discuss about migration path. Here, migration is the movement of hydrocarbons from their source into reservoir rocks. The hydrocarbon system in this basin is thought to have formed as a result of several phases of rifting and sedimentation. The migration of hydrocarbons in this basin is believed to have occurred primarily through faults and fractures, as well as through porous and permeable rock formations from source rocks, in the deeper parts of the basin to the reservoirs found in the shallower parts. The migration likely occurred over millions of years through a combination of processes such as compaction, faulting, and tectonic activity, which helped to create pathways for the hydrocarbons to move upward toward the surface. Note that, the specific migration path of hydrocarbons in the Krishna Godavari Basin, is still the subject of ongoing research. Stages of the tectonic history of the migration path are Rift stage when basin got initiated through rift, sin rift tectonics between Pamo Triassic to early Cretaceous. Sin rift stage when early stage sin rift sediments were deposited during early subsidence by tectonic fault systems. Drift stage when rift to drift transition is marked by a southerly or southeasterly tilt of the basin, leading to widespread marine transgression during the Cretaceous. Late drift stage when initial soft collision happened between the Indian and Eurasian plates and initiation of the Matsyapuri Palakolu fault took place. Now this figure showing us hydrocarbon migration. This is another figure showing migration path and hydrocarbon migration. Next we are going to learn hydrocarbon trapping. So, what is a trap? Well, in petroleum geology, a trap is a geological structure impacting the reservoir rock and cap rock of a petroleum system that allows hydrocarbons to accumulate in a reservoir. However, the Krishna Godavari Basin is a passive margin basin on India's eastern coast. Its sedimentary fill covers the Jurassic and Pliocene eras, representing the pre-rift, sin rift, and post-rift phases of basin evolution. Five separate petroleum systems associated with the tectonostratigraphic development of the basin make up its hydrocarbon habitat. Moreover, the oldest part of the Earth's crust, the Kamagudem Mandapeta system, was formed from the lower Permian coal shale sequence. Most of the gas reserves are located in structural traps and reservoirs that date back to the Upper Jurassic and Lower Cretaceous. Furthermore, Lower Cretaceous lacustrine shale and marginal marine sandstone serve as the major reservoir for the Gajulapadu Kanakolu system. The entrapment is primarily strati structural. As a result, the Upper Cretaceous Shale constitutes the foundation for the subsequent Raghavpuram Tirupati system. Lenticular sands are the only ones in the source sequence to be trapped. Next is Palakolu Pasarlapudi system. The Paleocene, Eocene marine shale and lower to middle Eocene deltaic sands provide the source material for the earliest of the tertiary petroleum systems. Most of the Eocene marine shale that makes up the youngest system in the basin may be found along the coast and in offshore locations, where the Vadaparu Ravwa system is found. Oil and gas accumulations are located in massive strati structural traps in reservoirs that date back to the Miocene and Pliocene epochs. However, the important gas fields are Mandapeta, Mandapeta West, and Endamuru. The thick and widespread Kamugudem coal, shale sequence is a proven source. The overlying Golapalli and Mandapeta sandstones are the main reservoir sequences. The sandstones are feldspathic and micaceous with thin intercalations of shale and clayston. The Raghavapuram shale overlying the Golapalli sandstone reservoir, widespread and thick, provides a good cap to the reservoir. The Mandapeta sandstone is overlain by thick red clayston belonging to the lower part of the Golapalli sandstone. Entrapment is due to fault closures and anticlinal structures. Moving on, the Rajamundri traps of the Krishna Godavari Basin have been useful in clarifying the relationship between volcanism and the KT extinction event as the only basalt outcrops along India's east coast that are contemporaneous with the Deccan traps, 
these traps hold a prominent position in the peninsular Indian geological canon. Additionally, a rich diversity of invertebrate fossils can be found in the sedimentary strata linked to the flows. The Rajamundri traps lie along the southeast arm of the Godavari Triple Junction. This figure is showing the aerial extent of Deccan Trap and Rajamundri Traps of Peninsular India. Now, let's study about prospects of the Krishna Godavari Basin. First of all, gas hydrates are one of the promising future major hydrocarbon energy resources which can be an alternative to oil and coal. They are solid crystalline substances in which gas molecules are trapped inside the lattices of water molecules which form a clathrate structure and exist in relatively low temperature and high pressure conditions. Furthermore, in Krishna Godavari Basin gas hydrates were established in clay-dominated sediments. Drilling in Krishna Godavari Basin of conventional wells in tight oil and gas fields without horizontal drilling in the shale rock formations and hydraulic fracturing. This drill site map depicting the location of the drill sites, established during both expeditions in the Krishna Godavari. In conclusion, we can say that, the Krishna Godavari Basin has great resource potential. The formation and evolution of the basin are closely related to the breakup of the East Gondwana Paleo continent. These basins experienced four evolution stages, the Lower Permian, Lower Cretaceous, Upper Cretaceous, and Paleogene are four sets of confirmed source rocks in the basins, and their horizontal distribution varies greatly. The reservoirs typically have poor permeability and medium to low porosity. The thicknesses of the top rocks vary greatly. Regional cap rocks make up the majority of cap rocks in the drifting stage, while local cap rocks predominate in the rift and thermal subsidence stages. Moreover, it has been determined through a detailed comparison with the hydrocarbon accumulation conditions in passive continental margin basins that are typical, such as the southern Atlantic, that the maturity and distribution of the source rocks in the Krishna Godavari Basin are the primary factors limiting the accumulation of hydrocarbons there. These are the references from where we collected information and figures. If this video seems helpful to you, please subscribe our channel. See you in our next video. Thanks for watching.